Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number, and in today's Tableau tutorial, uh, what I wanna walk through is how I build summary tiles to place at the top of Tableau dashboards. Um, there's a couple of different methods that I'll go through uh, for creating this, depends on the situation. Uh, so we'll just take a little bit of time to talk about each of those today. Uh, so as you can see, like I have on the screen here, um, this is a situation where uh, this is based on an insurance company I was working with, and I've actually created each of these five summary tiles at the top as individual worksheets. Just worked out better for what I was trying to do in that circumstance, all right? Um, but I have other scenarios where I've created summary tiles as a single worksheet, like in this restaurant example. So this is actually one worksheet that's all tied together into three different summary tiles, all right? Um, so summary tiles, the reason I like to use them so much is they're just a helpful way to give bite-sized information to somebody who's gonna look at your dashboard briefly but may not spend a ton of time there. Um, I also find them helpful occasionally as navigation tools. So like in that restaurant dashboard, you can click on the food uh, icon and it will actually filter the entire dashboard down to just food related items, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and flip over to a blank Tableau workbook and we'll go ahead and get started building some of this kind of content ourselves. Uh, I'm gonna use the orders table from the sample Superstore data set. If you would like to follow along with something similar, I've just put on my notepad here where you can find a similar kind of file on your computer. Okay? Um, so let's start with the circumstance where uh, you have a single measure that you want to turn to summary tiles that's going to end up being multiple tiles at the top of your dashboard. Okay, So I'll just go ahead and call this uh, regional profit summary. All right. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna start by grabbing my region field, okay, from my data pane. And I'm gonna drag and drop this field onto the columns shelf, okay? So what that's gonna do is just gonna give me four columns or four slices. And then we're talking about regional profits. So then I'm just gonna grab my profit field and I'm gonna drag and drop that onto text in the marks card. Now, technically you could say, these are summary tiles. You can put this at the top of the dashboard and you're done. Uh, but let me show you a few tricks that I like to utilize to really get these to look nice and pop out uh, for your end user. Okay. So first of all, probably want the text to be a little bit bigger. We probably want it to fill in a little bit more space. So I'm gonna select the fit selector on my toolbar and change it from standard to entire view. Okay. And then I'm gonna select text in the marks card and I'll go ahead and hit the uh, little bullets here to be able to edit. And I'm gonna change sum of profit to be much larger. Let's say, let's try 20 in bold. Okay, so that's looking quite a bit better. And I'm gonna get that text to center align. All right, so this is coming along. Um, here's a couple other tricks that I like to use. I might want to add some borders in between those squares just to break them up a bit. So that can actually be done through the color tab in the marks card. Uh, actually, we'll need to add a color to be able to do that first. So let me show you where we will add borders uh, through formatting rather instead. So I'm going to right click in the background of this worksheet and select format. Okay, And then you can see there's some tabs here at the top, uh, the formatting window. So you can see that one that I had highlighted uh, when I just grabbed the screen here called borders. That's where we're going to want to start with this. And let's try and add some column dividers here. So I'm gonna add a line for my column divider. I'm gonna choose, uh, let's say medium thickness and the third gray from the top left corner, okay? So notice as of right now, that column divider is only showing up on the very edge of my worksheet. Uh, so the last trick that we wanna utilize here is to move this level slider from the left to the right. So now it's gonna drop that level, uh, the uh, column divider into the level where it's going between each of my squares. Now to go ahead and kind of complete the look here, I probably just wanna match my row dividers to my column dividers. So I'm gonna make sure those are a little thicker and darker as well. Okay. Now a couple more things I like to do here just to get these to pop out. Um, this is just my own personal preference, but I really like to have the label, like the region label 
in the square with the number so there's not this sort of gap and potential dissociation between the uh, label and the number. And of course that's exaggerated right now because this is gonna be a lot more consolidated on the dashboard, but still, that's just my own personal preference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a copy of my region field uh, from uh, the data pane, and I'm gonna drop that on text in the marks card. And I wanna move that region label to the top and I wanna make it a little bit smaller. So I'll go back into text, select the bullets again to edit, okay bring region to the top, also want this centered, maybe not bold, maybe size 12. And then something just to be careful of here, if you do something like this, try not to leave this trailing blank uh, because that's actually going to make it so that your text is no longer vertically uh, aligned. It's actually gonna be shoved to the top a little bit. Just gonna make sure I clear that, okay? If I wanna format profit so it's dollars, you know, so it looks a little better, I could do something like that. Okay. So now, since I have the regional labels here, like where it says central, it's not there, I can actually hide the region labels. So I can right click on the region pill in my column shelf and deselect show header. Uh, I probably don't need the tooltip unless I'm packing some additional information in there that's not visible already. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the tooltip tab in my marks card and deselect this button show tooltips. Okay, and then finally, uh, this is, a lot of these things are optional. This is also optional. Uh, I like to make the summary tile backgrounds just a slight off color so that they stand out a little bit. So if I wanna make it like a light gray background instead of pure white, I'm gonna right click in the background of my summary tile, select format, and then in the shading tab of the formatting window, okay, so that's this little paint bucket icon here, I'm gonna select that and my worksheet background will be just a slight off white. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I've got an example dashboard pulled up. There's basically nothing in it at this point. It's largely just to show you how this would fit in. And I'm gonna take my regional profit summary worksheet, drag this to the top of the dashboard, right click and hide the title unless that was helpful. I mean, actually that might be helpful here because I haven't, I haven't said profit anywhere else. Unless I put profit uh, in the summary tile, probably a good idea to keep this title in retrospect. So um, I'll, I'll just edit the title is to make this text a little smaller. I don't want it competing with uh, the text in my summary tiles. And I'll go ahead and scrunch these down. Okay, so that's one way to create a summary tile. And that's especially helpful if you are using the same metric sliced up by a dimension. Okay. So now I want to walk through, okay, what if you have a situation where it actually makes more sense to have individual summary tiles? Um, and a good example of that was in that Kiva loans dashboard that I flashed earlier. Something that I was trying to do was to match the border of each summary tile to the color of that measure in the bar chart down below. Um, and I was just trying to do that for some sort of long-term or short-term, uh, color and memory association just to make it easier to track with the dashboard like, oh, I know green means repayment percentage. So if you have a situation like that, I'm going to show you maybe what's the easiest way to create summary tiles. So I'll do a new worksheet and let's say that I want to do a tile for sales, a tile for profit, and a tile for discount percentage. Okay, so I'm going to call this my uh, profit tile. It's actually going to start pretty similar to what we just did in that last worksheet. Now, I'll do it a little faster this time since you've seen this once before. I'm going to grab profit from my data pane, drag and drop that on text in the marks card. Okay. I'm going to set my worksheet uh, fit to switch from standard to entire view. I'm going to select text in the marks card, change my alignment to centered. Okay. And then I'm going to go in use the uh, bullets here to do some editing and I'll just call this uh, profit. Make this a little bit larger. I think it was 12 in that last dashboard and I'll make the, uh, the measure size 20 in bold. Okay. Uh, so similar things I want to do here and go ahead once again and turn the tooltip off. Okay. And actually here's one really nice thing that if you already have a style that you like in one worksheet, you can actually just copy that formatting and paste it into another worksheet. 
So if I go back to regional profit summary, I can right click on the worksheet title and say copy formatting. And so hopefully you can see that down here. So if I click copy formatting, go to my other worksheet, right click and paste formatting. Okay, you can see that the, uh, the row dividers didn't come in perfect, but it dropped in that background shading, which is kind of nice. And let's say we're gonna try and do this similar to that Kiva loans example. So I want unique border colors for each of my worksheets. I'm actually gonna handle that in the dashboard this time around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into format. I'm actually just gonna turn column dividers off for now. And same thing with row dividers. Okay. So I have my profit tile. Now I wanna create my tiles for uh, sales and discount percentage. So what I like to do is get one tile exactly where I want it, and then I'll right click on that tile and duplicate. Okay, so now I've got my sales tile, and there's a lot less work that I have to do. All I've gotta do is get my sales field and drag and drop it directly over my profit field. Okay, go into text in the marks card, Hit the buttons to edit and just change the label here to sales. Okay, probably just do a little number format in there to make it look like a dollar field. Okay, and now one more time for discount percentage. So duplicate this one more time. Drag discount on top of sales. Looks weird, it's because uh, there's a couple things I need to do to discount here. It should be a percentage actually. So let me change the number format to percentage. Okay, And I think what's gonna be more practical than adding all of our discount percentages together would be utilizing an average. So once again, I'll change the uh, title here. I'll call this average discount percent. Okay, and now we have our three tiles. So when I bring these together, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go to example dashboard two, and I'll show you how I like to bring them into the dashboard. So click on this tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the horizontal container in objects. Okay. Uh, this is a layout container. Oh, I did not mean to slash it. I'm so sorry. Horizontal layout container I meant to put a border around it. All right. So horizontal layout container. One of the things that it helps you do is to lay out objects in an orderly manner. And one of my favorite aspects is that it allow you to distribute objects evenly. So instead of me sitting there and trying to get the pixels just right so that the worksheets are all the same width, the horizontal layout container can help me do that. So I'll drag horizontal layout container to the top of the screen. And let's go ahead and start grabbing our tiles. So I'll start with sales drag and drop this in here. Note the blue border. Okay, that's really important. Um, the blue border is my indicator. Oops, rather like this. Okay, so this blue border is my indicator that a worksheet is getting dropped into a layout container, not just kind of out into dashboarding space. So sales tiles going in there. I want to follow that up with the profit tile. So notice that blue border, I'm trying to get it to go to the right of my sales tile. And then same thing with the discount percentage tile. Okay, looks like they already distributed evenly. That's really nice. That's one of the things the layout container will help you do automatically. In case you're not sure, you can click in the background of one of these worksheets. And that little handle at the top with the lines that you usually use to grab a worksheet and move it around on your dashboard, if you double click on that, it will actually grab the layout container that object is inside of if it is in fact inside a layout container. So I'm gonna hit the drop down for more options. And just in case they're not even, or if yours aren't even for some reason, you can say distribute contents evenly. They should all be the same width. Okay, I'm just gonna fire through quickly and hide the titles for each of these. And then again, to match Kiva loans, if I want different colored borders, what I would do is I'm gonna to go to the, the, uh, the worksheet I'm interested in, like in this case, sales. Then I'm gonna to go to the layout section or the layout menu in my dashboard. I'm gonna start adding some borders. So let's say that the sales border should be blue. I'm just gonna kind of make things up here. So let's say it's a medium blue. Let's say profit is more of a medium green and discount percentage is more of a medium orange. Okay, so now you know, if those color codings meant something throughout the dashboard and they could be associated, I've got those colors right off the bat. It's almost like a color legend for my end user 
tied into uh, my summary tiles. So those are the two different types of methods that I use to create summary tiles. Um, there may be some other tricks out there. If you have some ideas, feel free to share those in the comments. Or if you've got any questions, um, feel free to drop those in there as well. So thank you for following along for this tutorial. Uh, I hope it's been helpful and I look forward to catching you on another one soon.